Good evening, my name is Melanie Brooks, and on behalf of the Bloomfield Hills High School Counseling Department, I would like to welcome you to College Application 101 for the class of 2025. Oh. <laughs> Applying to college may seem overwhelming. However, we hope that tonight's presentation will provide students and families with a clear understanding of the application process. Please don't hesitate to contact your student's counselor with any follow-up questions. Tonight's presentation will be taped and posted on the counseling page of our high school website, as well as the counseling canvas page for the class of 2025. If you would now take out your phones and feel free to scan the QR code on the screen for immediate access to tonight's slideshow presentation. Okay, at this time, I'd like to introduce the Bloomfield Hills High School counseling team. Mr. Brian Fitzgerald is the counselor for students' last names A for the class of 2025. Mr. Jim Fogo is alphabet C through G. Ms. Hollerer is alphabet H through K. Mrs. Klein is B and L through O. I have alphabet P through SI, and Mr. Tony Medea has SJ through Z. The college and career, excuse me, college and career resource information is coordinated by Mrs. Luann France. Some of the materials that she's able, or the uh, pieces that she's able to assist students with would include college visits, College visits start as early as September when we return to school in the fall, and they usually go all the way through the month of November. We encourage students to make sure that they check their email regularly because they will have an opportunity to sign up to meet with these college representatives through their Naviance accounts. Ms. Luan France also coordinates the AP test registration. Sign up for AP testing starts in September and payments are due by November 8th of 2024. So this fall, registration for AP testing will start in September and end at the end of November, or the beginning of November, November the 8th. Um, ACT and SAT prep information, that information can be found or some suggested tutors can be found on the counseling page of our high school website. Um, she also helps with other college reference materials. Scholarship information is posted on our Naviance uh, page, as well as the Counseling Canvas page also highlights scholarships for students. Summer enrichment opportunities are posted on Naviance, as well as on the Counseling Canvas page for your graduating class. Factors to consider when you are applying to colleges. So many colleges use what they call the holistic review. So it's not just a matter of what a student's grades are on their transcript or what their test scores are. There are other factors that are used in determining whether or not a student is admissible to a college. They want to look at academic achievement, of course. Also, the rigor and the context within your transcript. So that means, are you challenging yourself every year? It doesn't mean that you have to have a certain number of AP or IB courses, for example, but it just means that you are taking something above and beyond what is the graduation requirements. Um, your personal attributes, your character, uh, the curriculum and the trend of the classes that you take, your intellectual curiosity, service and leadership, doesn't mean that you have to necessarily be a member of the student leadership to be able to show leadership, but maybe within any club that you have, maybe you have a role, you've taken on a uh, particular you know, concept within that club that shows that you have leadership potential. Um, diversity, geographic balance, the first generation, whether or not you're the first in your family to attend college. Income could also be something that's considered for your college admission whether or not you're an athlete or an artist. What separates you from other applicants to the college that you're applying to? So these are some factors to consider 
when you are looking to building your resume and to make you admissible to colleges. Two-year and four-year schools. So each obviously are colleges, but the differences are, for example, um, two-year schools, you can earn an associate's degree with completing two years at a community college. Uh, you can transfer those college credits over to a four-year school if you want to move further with your education and obtain your bachelor's degree. Um, community colleges also offer vocational degrees and technical degrees. Students can earn um, their general ed credits and then, as I said before, transfer them over to a four-year school at a much lower rate, typically. Um, students can be admitted, uh, but placement tests determine their levels of their coursework into a community college. And also, another benefit is sometimes students are able to transfer to schools that they may not have been admissible to coming out of high school because now they've shown their potential as a college student by doing well at that community college that they choose to attend. Uh, a four-year college is a place, obviously, where after four years, hopefully you're able to obtain your bachelor's degree. There's no need to transfer because you're already at a school working towards your bachelor's. Um, colleges range from less to more to very selective. They require certain courses, grades, and the GPA to be admitted. And then they offer a multitude of professional degrees as well. So two years, four years, whichever your college plan is, there is um, a chart here that shows the difference between the two and how you can transition from a two-year school on to a four-year school. So what should you be doing before this school year ends as a junior? So uh, look at what is required of the colleges that you're applying to, and you can do that on your Naviance account. If you need a letter of recommendation, we, we ask that you initiate that conversation, and typically we ask that that be a face-to-face -face conversation with one or two academic teachers that you think would represent you well in a letter of recommendation. Uh, it depends on how many letters that are required for your school, but typically one to two is typically the average that you would need to ask as far as the number of teachers that would write a positive letter of recommendation for you. And one of the reasons that we encourage you to do it before you leave, um, you know, some teachers like to start, as counselors do as well, working on their letters over the summer. Some of them may, you know, only accept to do so many letters, so if you ask them sooner, then maybe you'll be one of those that they agree to write a letter for. So we encourage you again to do that before you leave for the summer this June. How to go about requesting a letter. So even after you ask that teacher face-to-face uh, -face about doing a letter for you, there is an official way to request a letter of them, but we don't do that until the fall. And we will walk students through that process during our senior meeting that's in September. So there is a formal invitation that the student has to do through Naviance to ask the teacher to write the letter. And you can indicate what schools you want the letter to go to. And you do that through Naviance. And again, we will walk you through that process when we return to school after, or at the senior meeting in September. Um, the counselor letter of recommendation. Uh, if a college requires a counselor to write a letter, we have a student as well as a parent questionnaire that we ask every student to complete and every family to complete. So that just helps the counselors get a little bit more background information so that we can make sure we're writing a detailed and a personalized letter for each of our students because we do put a lot of time into those letters. And again, if you can do those forms, and they will be posted on Canvas after tonight, so that you can um, have those to us if possible before you leave in June so that those of us that want to work on them over the summer, we can get started on those. And when you come back in the fall, you'll be ready to start sending those applications after we have our senior meeting. Now we will hear from Counselor Tony Medea. OK, thanks, Mrs. Brooks. OK, so moving on to NCAA eligibility. And what we're talking about on this slide is initial eligibility for your first year of college. There are different requirements for Division I and Division II. Typically, if you're uh, seeking a Division III college, if you are admitted, you are eligible, okay? The thing we want to remember with this is speak to your varsity coach or if you're on a travel team about what division, what college is a good fit for you athletically. Academically speaking, you want to be able to register for the NCAA, 
there is a link in here that will allow you to uh, put in your application there. It's $100 for an amateurism certificate and also a grade eligibility. And there are different requirements. We have a school code there, 850251. That's different from our ACT code, which is 232. 447. So the NCAA has a special code for us there. And when you send your SAT or ACT score, you want to use 9999. Now, there also is a good guide out there. It's called College Bound Student Athlete Guide. And you can Google that. And there's charts in there, there's worksheets, everything that you need to know. Uh, if you haven't seen that and you are thinking about playing athletics in college. It's a good resource to have. It's free. You can print it off in PDF format, and it'll tell you everything you really need to know about getting started in this whole process. In June, you will receive a letter regarding your status towards graduation, and it will include your transcript, a little letter from us, and totaling up the credits that you have what you, I call it the what you have, what you need sheet in all of the academic areas so that you know that you're on track for graduation. In addition to that, by this time you should have at least three to five colleges in your thinking about list on Naviance. We'll talk more about that later. And reach out to your counselor if you have questions about the graduation audit letter. It is the students and the family's responsibility to know where you're at with your credits. And every year, there's always you know, some people that don't know we're here to help, but just please make sure you're really aware of that. We have a Naviance application uh, that's very phone friendly, and we'll talk more about that later. In the program software that we use for Naviance in grades 9, 10, and 11, these are some of the things that we do. It's, comprehensive of what we call an educational development plan. And it starts out, for lack of a better term, skills, interests, and abilities. How do I find out a little bit more about myself into career interests, aligned with majors, aligned with building a resume, college majors, careers, and it all melds together so that by the time we enter into grade 11, we have somewhat of a framework or a pathway in order to take the things that I know about myself as a student, as a learner, and be able to couple that with interest, skills, and abilities to make a good fit for college. And you're gonna hear over and over tonight about a good fit, a good fit, because it is a really important thing to think about. Okay, Mrs. Klein. Okay, so what should we be doing over the summer? Um, first of all, a lot of you guys might have already taken advantage of time to do some college visits. The summer's a great time to continue to do that. Even though college campuses might feel a little bit different in the summer, it's still a good time to just get your feet on campus, see what it's like, the size, the location. Um, it still can give you a good idea of what's out there. Um, you should fill out your student and parent questionnaire over the summer or even before the summer um, to help us get your letters done and give us the time to do them well. Um, we put a lot of thought and effort into those letters and your questionnaires and your information are incredibly helpful to us. So the time that you spend to work on those, we appreciate and ask that you do them sooner rather than later. Um, community service, hopefully all of you at this point should have at least three service experiences that you've logged on the Google form. Um, if you've already done three and you haven't logged any or only one or two, please do that before you leave for the summer, over the summer, work on some community service over the summer. We find many students have multiple community service experiences and have not logged a single one of them in the Google form. So that's a part of a graduation requirement and that's our only way to track it. So please make sure you do that. Um, a resume, so built into Naviance, and we've gone through this with you guys for the past three years, there's a resume builder. And we've encouraged you over the past three years to continue to add items to your resume, sports, clubs, theater, community service, jobs, etc. cetera. Um, you should have your resumes fully updated over the summer. 
Your resume is a wonderful tool for us as your counselor, for your teacher, and helping us write recommendation letters. So um, we would definitely encourage you to get that completed. Um, other things. So a lot of times students feel anxious to, I need to submit my application right away, right away, right away, over the summer, it's better. That's not really the case. We would encourage you to wait to submit an application until school starts for a couple reasons. One, you don't have your schedule over the summer. Um, even though you might have requested these six classes, maybe for some reason one of them doesn't work out for a scheduling conflict or whatever it might be. Um, and now you've submitted an application with incorrect information, and now that's a lot of backtracking for you. Um, there's questions and information it requests about your class size, other um, pieces of data that you'll get from us. So don't jump the gun on submitting an application early and then potentially creating problems for yourself later on. Um, Follow directions carefully when you're working on an application. Take your time. What is the question asking for? What is the section asking for? Am I putting the correct information in there? Um, email accounts. You'll have to obviously use an email account to create your Common App account. Please use an appropriate email account. I know a lot of times kids have emails that they created like in middle school and they're silly, goofy names. Um, create a new one. We would, you can use your Bloomfield one. We would encourage you to use a different one. You lose access to anything through your Bloomfield account um, in July. And even though that process might be all done, you never know if you're on a wait list or something comes through and now you can't access your email. So a personal email that's an appropriate email would be our recommendation. Um, college applications will be available. Probably some schools will be posting them as early as July. You can start working on them if you want to. Um, the Common App will be in its new cycle on August 1st. If you've created a Common Application account already or decide to create one at any point before August 1st, that's fine, you can. Um, there's a whole rollover process, but the entire application does not roll over, only parts of it. Um, so just be careful that you're doing only the common app part of the application so you don't lose anything. Um, summer boot camp, we're in our, I don't know, fourth maybe annual, yeah. Um, summer boot camp this year, it's gonna take place on August 1st. Um, we will have a morning program here with three different sessions. Um, Mrs. Griesbeck will be here working with students on their um, personal statement, their essay. Two of the counselors will be here talking about Common App, Naviance, testing information, all that kind of stuff. You do have to sign up um, if you want to attend boot camp. So um, that link is a live link. Um, check the date, see if you can make it. Um, you do have to register in order to attend. Um, okay, so I mentioned the Common App. There are two different types of applications. The Common App, which goes to a thousand plus colleges, and then there's also applications that are specific to a university. Um, even if you're doing the Common Application, you are saving yourself a lot of time because your same application goes to multiple schools, but many of the schools also have a supplemental component to the application, which is a series of questions and items that are specific only to that university. Um, the university-specific applications are accessed directly through those schools. Um, it only goes to those schools, so it's singular in that way. And then some schools will offer a choice of a Common App or the university-specific application. It's really your choice. Colleges will say they don't prefer one over the other. Our advice would be to just work smart. If you have four schools that are on university-specific and Common App, it's smarter to use the Common App, so work smart. Um, okay, the essay. So lots of myths and truths and half-truths about the, co the college essay. Um, so it should sound sophisticated. It should sound like you. It shouldn't sound like a book. It shouldn't sound like an adult. It shouldn't sound like a tutor. Um, it should sound like you and what it, whatever it is that you want to say. Um, it's not about a topic that's impressive to a reader. It's about a topic that's personal to you and who are you? What do you want a college to know? Um, admission officers don't read them, that's not true. Um, they're actually now, because college admissions is so competitive, the essay is even more important. They're gonna spend even more time in looking at that in consideration. So um, they're definitely reading it. Um, they can tell if you get too much help. 
They can tell, like I said before, if an adult wrote it or if a tutor wrote it. Um, don't use AI. And I, one of our meetings we had talked about AI a little bit. Um, but they'll know if a computer is writing a personal statement because nothing that a computer writes is personal or about you and your life and your experiences. The essay is all about student voice. And your voice is lost if you're using a computer to speak for you. Um, some tips, understand what the question is asking. If there are multiple parts to a prompt or a question, make sure you're answering all parts of that. Um, there's a bunch of resources linked um, through the college essay guide that kind of reflect on this idea of brainstorming ideas and um, focusing on a theme. Sometimes students are like, I have no idea what to write. I have nothing that I can write about. But going through a brainstorming process, a thoughtful process, can help to you know, get some ideas flowing. Um, use your voice. Speak from the heart. Think about what is it that I want people to know about me? What's something important about you that is not anywhere else in your application. Don't just rewrite about, you know, your participation in the marching band. You know, that's in your application. What is it that isn't shared about me anywhere else in the application? The essay is a really good place to do that. Um, and have someone else read it. Look it over. Not too many people, because when you have too many cooks in the kitchen, everyone has a different opinion and a different idea and a different lens. So pick one or two people to, to read your essay for you. Okay, Mr. Fogel. Good evening. What an exciting time in a young person's life, planning your future. We are so grateful to be part of the journey. Uh, so really, to test or not to test? That is the question, right? So in the world of standardized testing for college admissions, things changed pretty drastically a few years ago with the pandemic. Most universities across the, universe, uh, across the country did drop their requirement to submit a ACT and or SAT score. So now most schools are still operating with this test optional, some use terms as test flexible, um, but they all mean that you can fully apply to a university that does not require a ACT or SAT to be admitted to that school. However, the literature out there now is showing um, some strong indications that the tide might be turning back towards these uh, required assessments. However, our local universities in the state have not made that official announcement yet. And for the class of 2025, it would be a little late to change that. So younger siblings um, may be dealing with a different story. But 2025, we're going to operate with not all colleges are requiring this um, one of these two exams. So it's really the student's responsibility to figure out and to monitor the requirements of the particular universities that they are looking at to apply to. And Naviance Student is our online application that holds the latest and greatest details for that information. So we encourage them to use that. And then take that extra step of going to the particular university that you're applying to and their website to make sure that all information is lining up accurately. One resource that keeps a pretty up-to-date list of all universities in the world, so they're dealing with worldwide universities if you're thinking of overseas as well as the U.S., is FairTest. FairTest has a link we've put right there where you can search by state, by country, or continent. So go ahead and visit that site to see what tests are required. We do, again, highly advise to double check the college's websites. Next, Naviance. We've been mentioning that several times now. And this is a program that your students are very familiar with, if you're not. We've been using it each year during the educational development plan in grades 9, 10, and as well as this year during grade 11. And this year, we focused on researching potential universities and colleges that might be a good fit. So throughout the school year, we were looking at students to consider uh, colleges that they were simply thinking about, that they wanted to really dive deep and see if they made that match in their own mind. Now, oh, as the summer goes by, and certainly by September 3rd, our first day of school, we anticipate and re re request that our students in grade 12 
come in with a hard list, a list that they're no longer thinking about, that they're actually committing to spend the time, the energy, and yes, there is money involved for application fees to apply to these particular schools. And the way that they would do this, and we will review this again with the senior class meeting in that first or second week of school in September. In Naviance, this is a screenshot where students would simply click from their thinking about list, the box that's to the left of the college name, then up at the top, hit the button that says move to application list. So at that point, you've thought about the list and now you're ready to make some decisions. From that screen, students will be asked a couple of important questions, allowing the program and the high school guidance counseling office to know the method that the student will be applying to that particular university or college. We need to know how you're applying, the school's unique individual application or the universal common application that can be used to apply to well over 500 schools. Please don't apply to 500 schools. That's a lot of money to apply to 500 schools. Um, but we do need to know that, and it's important. If there's a cross in the information that you actually apply to the school from the way you've indicated you were applying to the school, it will delay your paperwork coming from the high school electronically sent to the schools of your choice. That delay could push you past their early application deadline bump you out of that early pool, and put you into the regular decision pool. And if there's still cross of information, meaning inaccurate information than what you've done and what you've indicated, it could push you out of the regular decision pool and completely out of contention for admission at that school. So it's important that we have correct information on that screen. After you've moved the schools by indicating which application you'll be using. You'll then be on the school list called Colleges I'm Applying To. It's important you check that list. Is this the school list that you're applying to? You can always add schools to this list as the summer goes on or even as the early fall kicks in if there was a new school that you researched. As well, schools can be deleted. You're not locked into anything on this particular list. We would just need the student to contact the counselor assigned to them to delete the school. Students have the ability to add schools. They don't have the ability to delete. We didn't want anyone to accidentally delete a school that they spent a lot of time and money applying to. So email us, specifically naming the schools, to clean up your list to remove. But there's a lot of information on this screen that will be helpful for the student. From the application type, I mentioned early or regular. There's also other methods as well as links to the school's website and opportunity to email the admissions representative that works for that school right through the Naviance program with a click of the button to ask any questions that you might have unique to that school. So this is an important page I would ask our students to spend some time exploring once their list has been developed. So this is a screen that shows the welcome page. When students simply log into Naviance, they would click up at the top, colleges, and there under my favorites, they have the opportunity to click on colleges I'm thinking about, colleges I'm applying to, careers and clusters that they've researched to find out which careers lead to which majors that are offered at which colleges and the scholarship and money page to figure out how to pay for some of this. So this is the starting point really for your college applications to get a list going, share it with the high school staff that is supporting you, share it with your parents that are supporting you, and away you go. Enjoy the ride. It's one that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Next, Ms. Hollier. Good evening. 
Um, application deadlines. I could probably write a dissertation on the importance of deadlines because for some reason in this world we've forgotten about how important they are, but guess what? Colleges don't care. You better do it on time. Um, so there's several deadlines that you really need to respect, and that is one, counselor and teacher request for letters of recommendation. That's not up there. Um, we um, require at least 10 days, 10 school days, so don't request a letter and the deadline be the next day, because we're not gonna be able to do that for you. So please make sure that you respect your counselor and your teacher so that they have the time to write the letter um, that you need um, for your college admission. Um, there's application deadlines, so there's several different types. Um, which you see up here, the regular decision, rolling admission, early action, early decision, restrictive early action. So the typical ones that you're going to see, regular decision, that's when there's a definite date, right? You have to have it in by then and you'll get a decision. Rolling means you get your application in and they're rolling out decisions as they get the applications. The early action is also a deadline date and then they'll push out the um, you know, it's like schools like U of M, they'll push the um, decisions down the road, but they have a, de a definite deadline. Now, the early decision and restrictive early action are those upper tiered schools. Um, you need to have a conversation with your counselor because we do have to sign off on those through Naviance that we've had a conversation with you because it's something you really need to do your research on. Early decision is a binding one, which means if you get accepted, you're gonna to go to that school. So you really wanna make sure you do your research on the colleges that you're applying to and the types of decisions um, that fit you best. Um, there is an enrollment and a deposit um, of May 1, so you wanna make sure that you don't miss that. We had a student two years ago that missed the deadline for their payment, and guess what? The college said, sorry, we took the next person in line. So don't miss out on those opportunities um, because there's lots of students out there headed for college as you are and um, the colleges will just go to the next person. In the fall, we are gonna have a, um, a mandatory senior meeting so it will be specific to the application process. We're gonna have you review your transcript one more time. Really, really important for you to do that. You're gonna get it, as Mr. Medea said, in June. And uh, then we'll give it to you again when we get back with the hopes everything is good to go. Your eyes are critical because that's the one that's gonna get sent out to the colleges. Once we hit send, it's gone. So we want you to please pay attention to everything on that transcript because mistakes can happen. Um, the process for requesting a transcript, we're going to review that on how to do that, so don't worry about that process yet. And again, inviting your teacher recommender through Naviance. We won't do that till September, but as Ms. Klein said, we want you to start those conversations with your teachers so they're aware um, that you want them to write a letter or need them to write a letter for you. We are not, counselors are not counted as one of your letters. We get that every year. Do not count us as a teacher. There's, there's a difference, it'll say counselor recommendation or teacher. So we have a specific spot if a college is requiring us to send one for you. For your first transcript request, which we're gonna go over in September, you're gonna submit the following, and we'll review this again step by step at the meeting. Transcript requests will be made through Naviance, so we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. Don't worry about it. If you're using the Common Application, you're gonna match your Common App and Naviance accounts, which we will give you a video on. I think Mr. Fogel does a video. We will walk you through how to do that, but it's a very important step, and it must be done because your teacher and your counselor cannot send out information on your behalf without those steps to completed. Your, your student and your parent questionnaire, I think Mrs. Klein talked about this, needs to be submitted to your counselor. As she said, those can be done before school lets out now. You can do that through the summer. Um, if a letter of recommendation is required, we don't want everyone to do that. Schools like Central, MSU, do not want a letter of recommendation from your counselor. So don't bother to do that. Um, if those are schools you're applying to, you will not need one. Uh, they, they actually block us. 
And the other thing I'll say about the questionnaire, students, if you're gonna be a minimalist on how you answer the student questionnaires, you'll end up with a minimal letter. It's important, this is a letter about you, and same with your teacher. If your teacher wants you to provide them some information, this is your opportunity to brag about yourself, to talk about the things that you did while in high school so that we can write the best letter that we possibly can about you. You guys have great information. We can't possibly know everything about you, but we want you to shine in our letter. So it's really important you take the time to do that. Parents also, you know your kids. Please take the time on the questionnaire so that we can um, help your student um, have the best um, application. The essay, if your essay is completed and you want to share that with your counselor, it's also an important piece of information that will help us write a letter of recommendation. Um, I love reading um, essays. I think um, it just, I learn so much about the students when those are shared. Um, as Mr. Fogel talked about, the ACT, SAT, if you're going to have to send those scores, those come directly from the testing sites. We do not send those. And um, if you go into the slideshow, those links are live, so they will take you into the ACT, SAT, and the TOEFL. After your application submitted, we would like you to relax and, and do school. That's why we really want you to spend your time over the summer working on your applications because you need to do school, right, while you're here. We don't want you to catch senioritis. Some of you may already have it right now. Um, we want you to stay healthy, do well, continue to do well your um, senior year um, because colleges continue to look at, that, at your grades. Um, it's important to check the status of your application through the college's online portal. This is your job to make sure you got to keep checking. It's really important. Also check those emails. Mrs. Klein referred to uh, you know, changing your email and maybe using a personal one. One of the things I have noticed is you guys are not great at checking email. And it will hurt you down the road because you will get information. And that's why we don't want you to use your Bloomfield because you get so many emails that I've seen two, three, four thousand in students' inboxes, which is mind-blowing, but um, you don't want to miss out information from a college, so make sure that you're taking care of that. When in doubt, if you haven't heard something from a college, pick up the phone and call them. Call the admissions office. They're used to getting phone calls. We cannot answer a college's question. We can help you, but we're probably going to tell you, call the college, okay? Um, and you can do that during the school day as well. Be patient. It's going to take a few weeks for your um, application status to be updated. It doesn't happen just when you hit send, right? If you hit send, it could take weeks, four to six weeks, actually. So just be patient, relax, do school. And keep in mind, junior year is what you worked on right now. Get you in, get you into college, right? Senior year keeps you in. Acceptances. As soon as you have made a decision on which school you want to attend, send your deposit. Inform the schools um, who have offered you admission that you're declining that one if, if you're not going to go there, because that will help your peers open up spots um, so that those spots are already open and they're not waiting until May 1, right, for, de for the deferred students. Enter all your decisions in Naviance, and we will continue to blast out emails reminding you to do that because it's part of your graduation checkout. So it's really important you put all those decisions, as well as the college you'll be attending um, in, the, in that fall. That's really important so we can send your transcript. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Fitz, and he is going to continue with things to do. Thank you, Ms. Hollier. Thank you. Yes. And we only have a few more slides before a fabulous game that you're all going to be able to take part in. Are you excited about that? All right. Yeah, things to do. Um, some dates, put them on your calendar. The college boot camp is August 1st. Okay, August 1st. And that's something that the students need to sign up for, not parents. You don't sign up for your student. Your student's going to sign up for it themselves. That is on August 1st, and that just sort of gives uh, the kids an opportunity to, to maybe get ahead and begin working or continue working on their Common App, their personal statement, their essays, et cetera. 
Um, then we get back into school and we have college night, which hopefully many of you have already attended this past year, but that's where we have all a bunch of colleges and universities in the main gym. That is a big evening here. That's on October 21st. Um, the financial aid night, which uh, speaks to filling out FAFSA and how to help um, pay for college. That fi financial aid night is September 24th. Okay, those are big days for the calendar. Um, things to do, um, start looking and thinking about um, visiting or coming down to the CRC next year when the college reps actually will come to the school and they'll talk to kids in small groups or in large groups or individually. Um, I'm gonna speak about that in a little bit uh, in more detail. Um, of course, we want you to sort of get out there and, and visit colleges, um, whether it's a virtual visit or an in-person um, tour. Uh, again, a lot of things can happen in the summer. Campuses don't look the same in the summer as they do when colleges are in session. But if you haven't had a chance to go check out some places and you have a window of time in the summer, go do that. Um, begin to look for scholarships that are out there. And uh, we've spoken about your community service and make sure you're staying on top of that. Do some community service and submit your, your um, services action form. Okay, I was mentioning college reps, they come here. Um, we've talked a lot about Naviance tonight because Naviance is a huge piece of the senior year. In Naviance, there's a, a, a tab that's colleges and you can actually see the date and the time that different colleges are gonna be here. It might be a, from a large university like U of M, Michigan State, to some really small schools that maybe only two or three kids think um, that they would wanna learn more, inf get more information about it from the actual university rep. But right there in Naviance, you can click sign up, sign me up. Once you've confirmed and signed up, we will then get you a pass during whatever day and time that that visit is happening to come down and, pay and, and be a part of it. Um, and that, that college visits are continually being updated. Um, we've probably got some in there right now for the fall and throughout the summer it will continually update and even in, in September we'll get more that will continually update. So keep checking that if that's something that you, you find interesting. Stay informed and connected. Again, email, you guys got to keep checking your email and check your Naviance account, check your Bloom. We are going to be emailing a lot of information to seniors next year, especially at the beginning of the year. Students, check your email, check your email. Learn to use that Naviance account because a lot of things once, especially once you've submitted things to colleges, you can check through Naviance where the status is of your application. Has it been sent yet? Has it been uh, accepted yet? You can see that. Paying for college. College isn't cheap, but there are ways to offset the, the, the cost. There are scholarships, lots and lots and lots of scholarships, hundreds and thousands of them. Um, we will populate, we'll push out scholarships that we're aware of through our um, Canvas page. We'll push it out in Naviance. There's also, each individual college may have specific scholarships for their college. Go to Wayne State University scholarships and you'll see the different scholarships that if you are accepted to Wayne State, you may be eligible for. Um, there's websites like FastWeb, Appley, Niche, Student Scholarships, those are all linked right there. You can go into those websites and you can search. Some of them even give you things where you can put things specific about you and then it will shoot you a list of scholarships that might fit your, um, your personality or your strengths. Uh, we have the financial aid night, again, that's on September 24th, and you'll get information on how to maybe help offset the costs of college, as well as a link right there for the Michigan student aid, which um, some students are eligible for. Here's just a page with a whole bunch of links and resources that it's at the end of the slideshow. A um, bunch of links about for the common application. There's some links about the, the test optional schools. Right now there's over 2,000 
colleges and universities that are going test optional, as Mr. Fogel was speaking to earlier. Um, that parent and st student and parent questionnaire, I um, want to sort of, again, identify that and have you begin working on that. If not now, for sure, over the summer, um, that helps us out a ton when we're writing your, your essays. I'm done. Now we get to have fun with the game. Yeah. This is kind of just a little fun game, but it, it really just shows you that, you know, as we talked about, this is a process that, you know, there's no, like, round peg to fit yourself into. And somebody, some human out there, what? Oh, yeah. Some human out there is reading your information, and there's no rhyme or reason sometimes. Some students we look at and we're like, oh, my gosh, why did this student not get in? Um, so it just kind of shows you some of the things that they think about. So just listen for me. Come on this way. Listen for me to say step forward, step backwards, okay? Okay. If you have taken an exceptionally strong academic program, move up two spaces. <laughs> if you direct the gospel choir at your church, move up one space. If you embellished your activities on your application to look better, move down one space, Miss Klein. If you're a highly ranked harpist, move up one space. You made an early decision commitment to your first choice college. Move up one space. If you are in the top 20% of your class and you are applying to a very selective school, move down one space. <laughs> if you are a legacy to the college you are applying, move up one space. 2.3. There lies Mr. Fitz's problem. You have <laughs> visited the college, had an alumni interview, and filled out the questionnaires on the college website. Move up one space. That's very important. If you are willing to go to college outside of your region, move up one space. They like that out-of-state out money. If you, did if you did not write the optional college essay, move down one space. You baked pies and delivered them to the admission office, trying to say you were not an athlete but a great baker. Take two steps back. But they ate your pies anyway. If the topic of your college essay was sports as a metaphor for life, move down one space. They are bored with that essay. Your teacher recommendation said, he or she is one of the best students I've ever taught. Move up one space. That's what you want to hear from your teacher. If you will be the first in your family to attend college, move up two spaces. <laughs> if you dug latrines in Africa in, in a summer program between your junior and senior year only, move down one space. If you are an international student, you apply to all public IVs, move up two spaces. You are applying to an out-of-state public university, move up one space. If you are an Eagle Scout, move up two spaces. They love those Eagle Scouts. If you are a female athlete going to a D1 rowing school, never rowed before, but scored great on their ergo meter test, Move up two spaces. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Medea. <laughs> Your essay speaks of how you love to bake bread. The admission officer who was reading the essay happened to have French bread baking in the oven at the time of the reading of the application. Move up two spaces. You have a non-flattering video of your high school post-prom party posted on TikTok under your name. Move down two spaces. They do look. You love to play Rubik's Cube, so you formed a club, had a, had a competition, collected donations, got sponsors, and used the club to raise money and awareness for a worthy cause. Move up two spaces. 
If you come from a single parent household and must work part time to help with expenses, move up two spaces. You have a bulldozer parent, move down two spaces. To the admissions office, your essay sounds like it was written by people who were prematurely middle-aged. You are out. If you've applied early decision or single action, or single choice early action to more than one college, you are out. Your teacher wrote, he or she is not just an athlete. There is so much less than meets the eye. Over time, he or she has developed a set of friends who have learned to tolerate and even accept him or her. You are out. If you have used chat GBT to write your essay and the college has determined that it was written by an AI, you are out. It happens. If your counselor has to explain the reason for discipline given at a school, you are out. You failed to meet the academic standards, including rigor, GPA, and test scores. You are out. If you wrote your college essay, you forgot to change the name of the college you were applying to, you're out. And look who's left, Mr. Fitz, who Really struggles with directions. The college library is named after your grandfather who is an active, who is active in alumni relations. Move all the way up to the front of the line and stay there. <laughs> While this is um, a humorous game, um, there are, there, there's, there's some truth within that. And one of the things we like to end on is an article that we found from the Chicago Tribune. It was actually written during that um, application scandal a while back with Aunt Becky. College doesn't define you. College shapes you. College takes the high school you and molds it into the grown-up you. But the key component there is you. Your ideas, your work, your voice. You bring all those things to college. And college helps you figure out what to do with them. The buildings don't have to be covered in ivy. The alums don't have to include a former president. The name doesn't have to impress your family or your high school classmates. I say this all not to downplay the achievements of kids who are headed to the Ivy Leagues. That's a phenomenal accomplishment, worthy of much celebrating. But it's not the only way. It's not the only path to success. It's certainly not the only path to happiness. You can find happiness and success, not to mention brilliance and inspiration and lifelong friendships and mind-blowing authors and really good art and really bad coffee on thousands of college campuses. The key ingredient is you. What you bring, who you are when you get there, who you are when you leave, you matter most in this equation. Keep in mind, it's not where you go, it's what you do when you get there. Thanks for attending tonight. <laughs>